Woo! Woo! I made it through a countdown. Holy shit. It's funny to watch the countdown numbers go from like 39 seconds to 20. Like that's the state of this computer right now. Yeah, I know it's muted, motherfucker. It won't come off mute. I have to unmute it myself. It ain't muted now, though. I know it ain't. And I'll be seeing these uh, chat messages about five minutes after they're sent. So give me a little bit of time to catch up. But it's good to see everybody. I'm Uncle Bill. I'm on behalf of uh, the best radio show ever made, which is deadpit.com. And tonight is something special. Because the Chromebook dies tonight. <laughs> Thank fucking God. This will be the last time, hopefully, I'll ever have to put up with this bullshit of having to like press a button, press a button on the keyboard, and then about 10 seconds later, something happens. So like if I'm trying to start like a, a video intro, I'll press the button. I'll sit there for about five seconds and you don't see anything or hear anything. And then it'll just come on and sometimes I have to, I'll, I'll press it and be like, well, maybe it didn't like click it. I'll click it again. It'll come on, go off, come on, go back off. Anyway, it's been an experience to say the least. Uh, but how's everybody doing out there tonight? Let's see. We've got a whole bunch of people in here already to watch this. This is just going to be a basic ass stream. I'm not planning to do anything like fancy or anything in here. We got, uh, Froggy the Gremlin, the Magnificent Dane, Sean 428, and James Mike B, Scream Bloody Gore, uh, Robzilla Saturn Video, uh, Subjective, that's Dirk, Justin, Radkins, Texas HX, all kinds of people are in here right now. Open, <laughs> open the box, people are saying. So before I do open this, though, and just talk about it, um, it's bizarre to me that this computer was almost completely funded by people that watch and listen to the show. So I'm going to thank these people now, regardless of whether or not they want me to uh, or not. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care uh, because it's kind of a big deal. So. This is the first time I've ever done any kind of like any GoFundMe related thing or anything like that, but um, it worked out swimmingly, and exactly, Patricia Patrick, I am exactly like Christian Slater from uh, Pump Up the Volume. That's what I was going for. I haven't seen that movie in a coon's age, by the way. I need to watch that again. There was that one, and then there was talk radio. I don't know if you remember that one, but that was another one that was like a cool, like, um, indie, you know, radio station kind of movie that came out around the, I think it was the early 90s. All right. So real quick, 19 people donated to this. Which is insane to think about. So huge thanks to the following people for funding this new computer and the end of Chromebook Mania forever, brother. Uh, Michael Bailey, huge thanks. Shane Vassar, Vosar. There was a couple of anonymous uh, donations, so I have no idea who made these. Michael Clark, huge thanks. Kevin Wood, I appreciate that. Rob Scott, Roberto, I appreciate that. Jace Whitman, Lori Ritz, Slippy donated. And I think Slippy donating at that time was really what got like more people to donate after that. Justin Howard, Jason Schneeberger, which we go way back. It's amazing to, to see that on here. Matt Hinchy, Chris Van Horn, Chris Van Horn. Yeah. It's that guy that played for Utah's brother. Gregory Ratz. Rask, another anonymous anonymous one. Edward Gahan, gone. Matthew McMullen, Michael Lancaster, Troy Herring, and Trey Smith. So, thanks to everybody that donated. I really, really appreciate it. Also, Dirk. There was a couple of people that scream bloody gore, and Dirk. I know I remember donated on the uh, 
on the actual show. So that's, I was just looking at the GoFundMe. So huge thanks to the people that, um, that donated on the actual show as well. Yeah. So somebody real quick before I do this too, Dana did some show like right before I got on here and it said something to the effect of that Dana is calling us out for some sort of challenge. And I'm going to only assume that the challenge has to be, uh, that we have to watch tear on tour, in which case I'm going to reject that challenge because that's the shittiest movie of all time. I ain't going to sit through that. I'm going to assume that that's what the challenge was, but if it was something else then somebody tell me if it was like to eat a bowl full of pudding or something like that, see who can eat pudding the fastest. Like, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that it was that fucking tear on tour movie. No, Dana. No, I'm not doing that. If anybody's ever seen Terror on Tour, you'll know why I'm not doing that too. Because that movie. Uh, I could just sit here and like stare at the fucking door and that would be the same. So I'm I'm gonna pass. But also, yeah, real quick, Red Red, that you mentioned that movie is weird. The Devil and Father uh, Moth. I just watched that uh yesterday because we did the uh Matt and I did the freaking tribute show and then i started thinking about that i'd never really seen that documentary all the way through anyway and i went back and watched it and it was it was okay i mean i kind of understand what people you know what people kind of didn't like it as much for but it was just okay i it, to see like somebody doing a real life exorcism and you kind of sit there and you just, all the thing I was wondering the whole time was like, is this real? Or is this woman just like bullshitting around? Cause nothing really happened. Like, I mean, so, I mean, I could get on there and just be like, bleh, bleh, your body sucks cocks. I could do all that stuff if I wanted to. I don't. Oh yeah, mayor. You did get a new member symbol. That's right. CK. We might, we might've done it. Had Dana donated to my laptop fund, but she did not. Rambo, it's good to see you in here, man. So now that I got this, uh, we can do many more shows and I won't have to worry about it. I haven't been doing like a lot of other people's shows or anything because I'm always scared to death that something will fuck up because it's every time I've ever tried to do a uh, roundtable show in the last, I'd say, three or four months, it's fucked up like in some way or another. So... And that last one was bizarre as hell. Like the last round, what brought upon this whole thing was the last roundtable show that Dead Pit did. If you want to watch something fucking hilarious, go back and watch that. Because it was just like my computer by that point was not having any of like any more than three people, including me together on these streams. And it just shuts down. Like, I don't know what, that is if anybody knows more about computers you might know what it is but like if there's more than like three videos on the screen of people like it will not display them like one by one they'll just be like loading and it will it never really did that before until the last couple of months and and then it would just throw me off there randomly it would just it's like kick me out of the stream so i don't know it was it was like my chromebook was like fuck you piece of shit you had me for like seven years and do nothing for you no more so let's take a look at what we got though shall we uh before i show this off huge thanks to mark for helping me with this and you got to keep in mind because i know unfortunately there's a lot of fucking nerds in here and there's a lot of it nerds in here and before i even show this i can already predict like what some of the comments are going to be i don't care because the point of me showing this is to show people that like i actually got this and that the donations were actually spent on the thing that they were supposed to be spent on but i can already imagine like because <laughs> there's so many fucking people that are apparently in the geek squad and in, the, in these chats that are going to be like well you should have got this this and this and it's like dude uh, yeah, I, it just, it is what it is. Mike 13 V2. You've said this kind of shit before. There ain't nothing wrong with my mic. Does anybody else notice that I have any mic issues? Because that's one thing that I haven't ever 
had on here. It's mic issues. I've had every other type of fucking issue, but I haven't had that yet. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steven, like, that's, that's exactly what is going to happen. Oh, the, 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 it's probably the fucking video glitching out, to be honest. It's actually taking the audio with it. Yeah. So let's take a look at uh, the new setup. And it's not, um, it's not, uh, like there's some people that I know no names should be mentioned but they've got like five thousand dollar setups and everything like that that probably ain't never going to happen but I believe that this setup will allow me to continue to do the show for a really really long time Mark you piece of shit so if anything's wrong with this it's Mark's fault I just want you all to direct all your commentary to Mark and this could quite possibly be the last time that this computer makes it through anything. So, yeah. So, welcome to the new Chromebook uh, Pro Platinum. I'm just kidding. I wish it was, though. By the way, so this is what I got. This is, I don't know how well I can even fucking show this thing off. Ugh. That's kind of not glaring in it. Good Lord. This mic gets in the way of it. So this is very similar uh, to the one that I was going to buy with one exception. So this handle with care. It's fragile. By the way, just a side note here. Don't ever, ever, if you can help it, buy a... Uh, laptop from um, Amazon because uh, it came, they packaged it, <laughs> this is how they packaged it, this box. It was inside of like a box about double the size of this and that was it. Like they didn't have any peanuts, any bubble wrap, any like anything in it it was just like rolling around in there it's like there like i cannot believe this actually made it here in fucking one piece so this has an intel core 5 processor and it has one terabyte of ssd and i believe it's 16 gig because the other one was 32, but so many people were like, it really doesn't matter if it's 16 or 32, if you get the, the better processor. So it has that processor. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I kind of fucking know. Yeah, this was coming. <sighs> yeah, so <laughs> everybody on here is like, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, yeah, that's junk. Not that one. Not an HP. Uh, let's show, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see how long this lasts. Yep. Garbage PC. Yep. Amazon's terrible with that. Well, I had no idea. How, like, Amazon's usually okay um, with, like, packaging my other shit. But for some reason, like, in this, they were just like, oh, it, fuck it. This is like a $650 purchase. We'll just fucking throw this in, like, Nothing. McCor says he works at Amazon and we don't use peanuts or bubble wrap on the computer. Tells us what size box to put stuff in, which is usually wrong. Yes, this was incredibly fucking wrong. Matt says only one terabyte. I need seven terabytes. Okay.
Thank you, Rooster. No. That's what I'm saying. Like, they didn't ship it in... They didn't ship the laptop in anything. It was just fucking laid in there inside of a box. And I've gotten stuff from Amazon before that was like just piddly ass shit, like a bar of soap or something that they would put at least like paper and stuff in there to keep it from rolling around. Oh, God. Saturn video. Uh, I'm not getting into this night. I'm not doing it. I feel like Dana on them streams was like people come in there and like she just starts going off. I don't want to go into that. The slip, they would be awesome if they had a slip cover. I mean, he says, this is some good insight about working for Amazon. He's had to package brooms and boxes the size of refrigerators. Yeah, I really don't feel like that they like they do the best job. Like with the, with their they, like everything else is fine. The shipping was fast, and everything else the purchase was fine. But like, who decides to ship a fucking laptop in just like a cardboard box? I can't access uh, AOL. But I got to say, though, that this Chromebook is seven or eight years old. So you think about, like, return on investment. I didn't even buy this fucking thing, for one thing, so it's really not my investment. But, I mean, prior to about probably six months ago, this thing worked fine. And... Probably somebody bought this for, I would guess, about $200, maybe. I mean, that's pretty incredible, really. Uh, that, no respect at all, Carter. So how much RAM does it have? I believe... It's, that's what I was talking about earlier. I believe that it's 16 instead of 32. But like I said, the one I was going to get before was 32, and everybody lost their fucking shit because of the processor. So, And to be honest with you, man, for what I do on here, which is simply stream, I'm not going to do anything else. I think everybody knows that this is going to be fine. And it's damn sure going to be a uh, a step up from this. I want to open the fucking thing. It's probably broken all the hell in here. I need... Hold on. I'm going to try to get a, uh, a knife or something. While I'm in the midst of this, feel free to throw out uh, random comments, questions. An insanity. But this, and still, this is like the most shocking thing about this to me, was this was completely funded by people that listen to the show, which is amazing. I would 100% uh, smash the fuck out of this Chromebook if it didn't have a bunch of stuff on it that I need. Jesus Christ, dude. Bring me a knife to open this with. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say, like, bring me a fucking sword in here, but that's fine. Um, The processor is a five it's an intel core i5 so the one i was going to get was a three and that's when everybody lost their fucking mind 
So this is a five. I know there's a seven and a nine, but I don't have five thousand dollars. So do you like punk rock or are you strictly blue? <laughs> what the fuck, Cromzilla? I mean, honestly, I like some bluegrass. And um that's weird because like I guess it's an age thing. You just like start getting older and start liking bluegrass around here. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I like a lot of punk rock and hardcore punk and stuff like that from the early 80s, especially. Made possible from viewers like you. That's actually true. <laughs> this is PBS. All right, <laughs> let's see if I can open this thing without fucking killing myself. Look at this fucking knife. Let me take my finger off here real quick. I do believe pretty much any other knife would have probably done better than this. I got a pocket knife in there that probably would have worked. Fucking Michael Myers over here. It says if this thing sucks, emails. We'll help you out. <laughs> Bronson Wright, it is actually like that. Yeah. It's like honestly, it is a um like an early birthday present. My birthday's coming up on Tuesday, so that's what it feels like. I know I do need a box cutter, Dana. Or something, like a fucking pocket knife or something. Oh my god. It's a new fucking computer. This thing looks lovely. Look here. I'm just gonna drop it and smash it all the fuck. Look here, bulls. Look at it. Everybody bow down to the HP laptop. Look here. Bow down to it, you bitches. I'm just gonna sit here with it. I'm gonna sit here and cuddle with it for a minute. Uh, a birthday wish list. Radkins? Not really. Like, really, the only thing I needed was, uh, this fucking computer, so. Other than that, there's been a lot of physical media stuff come out, but, like, I bought, like, quite a bit of it. Um. And, like, the stuff that I didn't buy, like, I, it's not anything that would blow anybody's skirt up or anything. So I feel like I'm okay. That's my own protection knife. Yeah, look at this fucking thing. I was like, can you bring me a knife in here to open my computer with? This is what she brings me. Yeah, I'll bring you one. Cut your fucking arm off with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've never tried to open a box like this with a knife like that, but that's all I had. Uh, ain't no way, Mac boy. Your birthday's two. Your birthday's on the fifteenth. McCorry says that's a good laptop. People on here talking about like giving you shit about the laptop probably got to well it's it's one of two things either they're fucking bullshitting around or they're like your typical geeky like it fucking people that would say that about just about anything and that i really can't stand people that do that shit anyway 
just about anything in general, but especially about computers, because I don't give a fuck about IT stuff. I'm sorry. That train left me like way, way long time ago. I'm too old to give a fuck at this point. The question I have is, will it run? Does it have a better processor than the one I currently have? And will it last like a certain amount of time? And the answer to all three of those questions is yes. DMC87 says that he watched the Leap of Faith documentary after the freaking show, and it was great. Yeah, I actually watched the freaking uncut. Uh, freaking uncut is on. It sounds like I'm saying freaking uncut. Friedkin uncut is on Tubi right now, too, if you want to watch that. So let's check and make sure the screen is not destroyed. It could possibly be fucking shattered the way that it was packaged. Bronson Wright sends another super chat and he says when Drew K first started hosting The Price is Right, Bob Barker told Drew K to make the show his own and try not to copy him. I think that's good advice. I think that's sound advice in that case. I feel like he made it his own, Bronson. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Let's see. Princess Puffins is going to lay on it. She probably will, actually. Play some Buck. <laughs> I forgot about that game. I probably will accidentally drop it on the floor here in a second. Let's make sure it's not smashed already. Wouldn't it be fucking killer if it just fell out of my hands and just busted into a thousand pieces? I'm kidding. That would actually not be killer. No. Amazingly, it's still got the little thing in it. You know that little black thing they put in? I don't know what exactly that's for, but yeah, it's fine. On the keyboard there, little black thing, and the screen is not destroyed, so that's nice. So we're going to hook this some bitch up. The next time I see y'all, which I guess, when will the next time I see y'all be? I guess it will be, yeah, Wes is in here, he'll say. But also, um, don't forget too that there is, in addition to the shows and this fancy new fucking laptop that I got, there is going to be a, I want to almost say contest, but then it's not a fucking contest. It <laughs> is like an auction, but they call them claim sales. So for the people that have been asking about this, I don't know how many people are familiar with claim sales, but basically it's where you just take a bunch of shit, horror related stuff in this case, and you put it up on Instagram in this case, uh, other places do it too. And you're just like the first person to claim it via, you know, just putting like typing in the, the comments thing, claim, you know, whatever wins it. So it's sort of like an auction, but they, it's, it's a, cl a claim sale. And we're going to be doing that on Saturday and Sunday. So CK is going to put stuff up on the Instagram on Saturday for sale. And I'm going to put stuff up on the Instagram on Sunday. And we'll have like a designated time. I'm guessing that we put stuff up and once it starts going up, then whoever like claims it first will be the one that, that gets it. So this could be anything from like Blu-rays to physical media to, uh, figures, vinyl, um, horror memorabilia, just basic movie memorabilia or basic movies and stuff like that. Like it could be any of that stuff. It's coming up Saturday and Sunday. So, in lieu of an auction where you get on here and like, you know, people bid on things. We're just going to try to do that first and see what happens. Oh yeah. The happy birthday 
Uncle Bill, Uncle Bill show. I should have fucking known that. Is live on the MWO on Wednesday. That'll be the next. That'll be the first time that I use this new computer. So let's go through some comments here. Uh, you better start upgrading it, updating it now. It's going to take a month to finish. See, I don't know about that because I never had to update this Chromebook. Chromebook was always there for me. Uh, Carter says he saw a TikTok of behind the scenes footage of his new movie, of Freakin's new movie, and Freakin was screaming, It's hot on this fucking set. <laughs> yeah. Also, Del Toro was there to finish the movie in case Freakin died. Jesus. What? I can't even say that or post it. Alyssa Milano, Star of Team Wolf 3, but I want to. What's up, Scott Steiner? And Neil Hamburger's in here, too. I can't even, like, post any of the stuff that you're saying. Movie Junkie John, the Masters of Horror Show is going to be amazing i actually started watching that show again and i think i got to i'm on season one and the sick girl episode so i've watched john carpenter's cigarette burns which was great uh argento's jennifer which was more insane now than i even remember it being then when i first watched it and homecoming which was great and then there was a lot of really kind of like less than great ones on there that weren't that memorable but um when we really get into them we'll talk about them on the show but so i'm going through the whole first season of masters of war which was actually from what i can gather right now and i'm not like anywhere near being through it or anything but it seemed like it was pretty underrated actually uh, even for that time period, because there's some really good episodes on that, like episodes that would rival, you know, like, let's say like tales from the crypt or something like that. Yeah, this is a test of the, uh, the new claim sale thing. We've never done anything like this before. So hopefully it goes well. Is Masters of Hara still on Screenbox? I have no idea. I just bought the first season on Amazon. The worst Masters of Horror episode. Oh, shit. Of the ones that I've seen recently, Dance of the Dead was the worst one. That's a fucking horrible episode. Um, And that was the, I think that was the Toby Hooper one. But by that point, Toby Hooper was doing fucking mortuary and stuff, so. Hara. Did it suck Jackson Jack? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. That was, um, McCor says the one that stands out for me was the fat guy from Cheers who's a serial. That was Family, I think. I can't remember if that was season one or two. I think it was season two. Because I think that was John Landis, and I think John Landis did the Deer Woman one in season one, which fucking sucks, too, by the way. In my opinion. Uh, Daniel says, do you think the 80s Sweet Home with VFX by Dick Smith will ever get a proper release? No, I do not believe it will. Carter's favorite Masters of Horror episode was Imprint. I haven't got to Imprint again, but I remember the first time I watched that and I was like, holy shit. Like, that's a serious fucking episode right there. John Landis is indeed a homicidal maniac. He is both a maniac and he was also homicidal at one time. 
And while I got everybody on here, though, first things first, uh, click the like button and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Also, um, make sure that you go on Instagram and it's into the dead pit. You want to sign up for that if you want to be a part of the claim sale, because that's the only way that you will be part of the claim sale. So go ahead and do that. And also, if you want to support us just on a basic bitch level, uh, you can go to the Patreon and sign up for Dead Pit on Patreon.com. Uh, real quick, I want to make a recommendation to anybody that's never seen this movie. Because I just watched this again for the first time in probably 20 years. And this is an outstanding fucking movie for people that don't know. And the people that do know will know. I just watched the 4K of Dress to Kill from Kino. And if you've never seen this movie, if you're even like remotely a fan of Jallos or Brian De Palma, either one of those things, uh, you need to see this movie. You need to go ahead and buy this fucking movie. Also, if you're even remotely a fan of us, you need to go to orbitdvd.com or um, grindhousevideo.com and buy the End of the Pit documentary. It is now currently selling at both of those locations. Hmm. Thank you, Bryce Bourne. I appreciate that. It took a... Uh, a lot of doing, but we finally got there, bulls. You've never seen it, Jackson? Yeah, it's it's a a lot of the setups to the movie are um, amazing. Also, um, a lot of the setups to the uh, to Dress to Kill are amazing. I was talking about End of the Pit. The setups to that movie are insane. Um. Are they selling the historical revisionist edition of End of the Pit? <laughs> I wish. Um, I wish I could talk about that too, but I'm just going to say, like, um, I'm very, very confused about what the issue was with anything that I said about end of the pit on that stream on that um if anybody's curious like there was a there was a stream that we did that was like a shoot of end of the pit and i don't remember saying anything that fucking controversial on apparently like oh it fucking blew people's minds like a couple of people uh some of the stuff that i said on there but like i think i had said that stuff all through the years but maybe like nobody was it never was in a spot like that where it was on a stream or like a lot of people were kind of paying attention to it, but the stuff I said on there was true. I don't know how you could really dispute the shit that I said on there. So I don't, I don't understand what the big backlash was about with that. It's not like I said, anybody was fucking, you know, raping a dog or anything, or there was any kind of crazy, you know, shit going on. I just said that like in a lot of the instances in that movie, uh, things were, edited and kind of put in to make it seem more like more dramatic flair than there actually was to anything that was going on. Like for instance, the main thing I can think of right off the top of my head is just the scene of me like walking down by the riverbank, which is not in any way how I would get to CK's house. Uh, Jackson Jack, I have seen The Being, and that is because uh, Jackie Kong did it, and I was a huge fan of uh, Blood Diner, which Jackie Kong is somebody that I've been wanting to talk to for a long time uh, just to do an interview with, and I'm hoping that that happens eventually. Um, of course, says, what is my opinion on 4Ks? I feel like the packaging is lower quality for such a small upgrade to picture quality, so it's kind of bittersweet buying them. Just 4Ks in general, um, I, I I just, the only thing I can think of to say is I go back to what Felsher said, and that kind of rings true with me, which from DVD to Blu-ray was like a huge leap in quality. Um, 
but as these things go along, like the leap in quality gets like less and less noticeable. So sometimes I honestly think that the Blu-rays of some of these movies look better than the 4Ks. I've seen some 4Ks that look better and they look amazing. I've also seen some Blu-rays that look better. So I don't think it's as noticeable or as kind of like tangible as the as the transition from DVD to Blu-ray was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jackie Kong is still alive, Jackson Jack. I think we could get her to do an interview eventually. Scott S says, "Has Robert Cummings' Halloween grown on you at all?" Uh, no, no. Amazingly, like all these years later, which that movie was released, I think in two thousand seven, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, something like that. Uh, it hasn't like, I haven't no, as a matter of fact, I think I might like Halloween two more now than I do the original Halloween. I fucking hate that movie. Especially like the first half of that movie. Well, really the ending of that movie. I really hate everything about that movie. Now, the more I think about it. Uh, actually punch says he always thought Keith Gordon would have made an excellent Peter Parker. If De Palma made a Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Keith Gordon, um, uh, it's weird to look at him now, though. He looks crazier than hell. Like, his hair, he's, like, bald, but he's still, like, one of those guys that keeps some of the hair, like, just going, like, in all different directions. Like, he has no pattern, so he looks like a crazy person. A remake of Faces of Death was announced. Red, red. That's good. I'm sure that'll turn out good. Uh, you got to excuse me. Like, I'm looking at this chat, but it takes forever to fucking load on here. Uh, Jackson says he likes the Halloween Kills trilogy way more than Rob Zombies. I mean, I don't. I, to be honest, like, I like Halloween 2018, and then those other two movies fucking suck ass. But I st you would still, like, be hard-pressed to hold a gun to my head to get me to choose between, like, the, the, ha the Rob Zombies Halloween or, like, Halloween Kills or Halloween Ends. Like, I don't know which one of those films I hate worse. Carter says the Cannibal Holocaust Blu-ray still looks great. Yes, it does. We just watched that, by the way. You can check that out, too, if you haven't seen that, where we watched Cannibal Holocaust with Garrett. That movie was insanely more graphic than I remembered it being. It had been a long time since I'd seen that movie. And probably when that Blu-ray came out from Grindhouse Releasing, was the last time that I watched it and it was crazy to go back and watch it and the animal like stuff in there was just like so much worse than I remembered it being uh what Scott S. says, I liked Halloween 2007, but I was really horny at the time. I could see that. So, apparently I share a birthday. Me and Matt Boy Color share a birthday with Napoleon, Jennifer Lawrence, Ben Affleck, and Anthony Anderson. God, that's it's all kind of sad. Uh, how do I feel about Last House on the Left now as I get older? I still find that movie to be um, watchable. And I'm a good person. I just want to keep, I want, you, I want you to keep that in mind as I talk about like liking Last House on the Left. I want you to know that I'm still a good person. But um, yeah, I don't, 
I don't know why, but that still seems to hold up to me for some reason. I find a lot of the stuff in it to be uh, hard to watch, but I think that that was kind of the point of that movie, really. So I don't like look at it like I don't look at it down like because of that. The last, last Halloween movie with the Corey kid made Rob Zombie look like a genius. Red, red. Well, a lot of people say, Red, red, that that last Halloween movie was actually uh, a masterpiece that a lot of people are not going to understand until much, much later on. So eventually that movie will age, you know, and be like a cult classic is what I've heard a ton of people say. And these people are not like, you know, stupid people either. So maybe we just missed something about it. I think that my, maybe we missed the magic somehow. What would I say is Wes Craven's best movie, Carter? Um, for me personally, uh, it's Hills Have Eyes. There's just something about that movie that I like um better i don't know what it is it's the it's the vibe of the movie the atmosphere of that movie <laughs> it's a good like um sandwiched in between like last house and nightmare on the street so before he goes full on like you know studio versus like just you know the most you know reprehensible art house style film like right in between was like a really great combination of both those things which was hills have eyes so I think that I like that one the best. Jack Frost says, do you still find the scene from Ebola Syndrome where they are ripping the chicken's head off unsavory? Yeah, I don't really. There's a lot of stuff from Ebola Syndrome that like was crazy, but the tone of that movie is not serious at all. So it's easier to kind of watch, really. boot up the computer and see how fast it sets up. Uh, I don't have any way of doing that right now without fucking a ton of stuff up, but I assure you that I will uh, have it for the uh, Wednesday MWO. Swamp Thing Adrian's Tatas. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I haven't seen that movie in at least 20 years. And that new edition is out. I don't think I've ever seen the edition with Adrian Barbeau. So I'm sure it's amazing. McCord says People Under the Stairs is favorite. Um, Scott S. says Hills Have Eyes makes him think of nipples. That's probably a sign of something. Uh, X-Ray says Craven had a trilogy. Last House on the Left, Hills Have Eyes, and People Under the Stairs. They're all class war films. Yeah, I guess I could see that. Swamp Things is DC, yeah. It's weird that that movie was made, really. like That was around the time when you just didn't make like comic book movies at all. And to have it be made by like Wes Craven, who up to that point, I don't think had done anything like that. It's such a weird choice of all that. Garrett has not recovered from Cannibal Holocaust. Garrett has been, um, he's currently institutionalized in a psychiatric hospital in uh, Rhode Island. He doesn't want us to give out the name or anything like that, but he'll be out as soon as he gets his meds adjusted. Jack Frost says he finds these Hong Kong movies where they are taking true crime cases like Untold Story and having a weird tone with comedy and then other scenes which are deadly serious. Yeah, I've, I've watched um, Untold Story and... I don't know, man. Like I, to be honest with you, and I hate to say this because Rackin's got it for me, and that was awesome. 
but I just liked a bowl syndrome better than I did that movie. I was not overly like blown away by untold story. Matt says he got the vinegar syndrome package today is excited to see this elevator movie out of order. <laughs> Carter says the first ever, ever Marvel movie was Howard the Duck. God damn. I wish they'd go back to making Howard the Duck. I'd find that more entertaining than like any of the Marvel movies that come out now. Uh, Manny Diaz says that he's still waiting for Vincent to ship his showgirls replacement disc. I wouldn't be waiting on Vinegar Syndrome to ship anything at this point. Like that last... Um, shipment took for hell and the one before that took about a month too so at this point i'm not impressed with vinegar syndrome and their shipping so i'll probably just buy from like other like orbit or something like that from this point on scott s says the kindred is very good and somehow relevant today yeah i just uh watched that not too long ago again from synapse James Gunn is running the new DC film universe and he's directing the next Superman movie. I'm excited for anything James Gunn does. I guess. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Like I like James Gunn and he was actually like really cool back in the day. Um, actually, you know, really liked some of the shit that he did with trauma. But uh, I just don't fucking like superhero movies, man. I don't like, I've tried really hard to like a lot of those movies. But even like the stuff like Guardians of the Galaxy, I just don't give a shit about. The best, Carter says, the best 4K boutique label. Right now, it's probably Second Sight Films. Followed by like Arrow. Um... I don't even know where I'd put Vinegar Syndrome at this point. Severin's dead fucking last. I'll tell you that. I know who would be last. It would be them. I think Terrorvision is charting above uh, Severin at this point. What did you think about the Hills Have Eyes remake? Um, I watched it. Yeah, I watched it too. That's about what I think. I mean, a lot of people like that movie and think it's better than the original. It's not. They, there's a lot of people that think that, though. Um, but it's um, one of the more tolerable remakes. It's just toward the end of it, it gets really stupid. And, like, when you got the big brain thing sitting there and the makeup effects are, like, the guy's head is so far, like, you know, because there's so much makeup piled on it, his head's, like, this fucking big. Like, it just kind of got silly. Wes and Cody Craven. Okay. Uh, Radican says the bowl syndrome, I would say, is more comical and enjoyable. I do like Untold Story because it's actually based on true crime in China. Yeah, I mean, I could see that because the story of the film is basically like this guy really weirdly like just takes over a restaurant and I think he kills the owner or he's working in it and like he might be the owner or he kills the owner. Anyway, at the beginning of it, like, and then he just like starts killing people and using this restaurant as a front to like kill them and put them in food and stuff like that, which I could see that being a true crime story for sure. Pluto did suck in the remake. I think Pluto was that Michael Bailey guy. I think that was his name. Yeah, I'm really interested to see all the shit that you got from uh, Goodwill tonight. Manny Dynamite Diaz, which sounds like a fucking boxer if I ever heard of one, says he just watched the Carrie TBE the other day. Why did she run up the gym... Why did she run up to the gym fish in the locker room trying to put her period blood on their faces? 
because she was panicking. Manny Dynamite Diaz, she didn't know what to do. Jim Fish, she meant Jim Girls. You missed the unboxing, Coco? Well, here it is, basically in a nutshell. I'm determined to drop this computer before I get a chance to use it. There is the new uh, official Dead Pit Uncle Bill computer. It is uh, shiny and silver. I was wondering that too, Jackson Jack. How do you typo like girls into fish? But yeah, I'm kind of at this point waiting for CK to get on here and show like the shit that he got from Goodwill. Because apparently he hit the Goodwill jackpot tonight. Yeah, so Matt says that he bought Freakin's book on Amazon. What the fuck is the name of that book anyway? Because I saw it on there too. And thought about getting it. Jack Frost says there are cases like these that are quite bizarre when they do actually happen in places like Hong Kong or Taipei. Acts of violence that defy any sort of explanation. Robert, shut the fuck up, Rob. Uncle Bill, when was the last time you hit up Ollie's and got something killer for like 25 cents? I go to Ollie's all the damn time. That place is killer. If you want to buy books, I'll just say this for certain. If you want to buy any kind of book, then Ollie's is the place to go because they've got like all kinds of like hardback books that are cheap as shit. Because I guess people around, they probably mark them down even more because people around here don't read at all. Yes, it is actually quite a bit bigger than the size of the Chromebook. What are you talking about, Jackson Jack? I didn't pronounce it anyway. That's just how you say it. Thank you, dude who loves movies. Oh, yeah, the Dr. Giggles poster, yeah. I got that actually super cheap. It's one of the few posters I've been able to get like recently that was off of eBay for cheap. And it was like $12 because I don't think anybody gives a shit about Dr. Giggles. But Jack Frost says there was a case recently in mainland China where an old geezer with a butcher knife walked into a preschool. I did not know that. I would say that's a lot rarer in those places than it is around here. Yeah, Vestron does have a release that you can get. Uh, Diabolic had those releases for like 15 bucks not too long ago. And they probably still have some of them, with the Vestron titles. Uh-oh, here he comes, Bulls. See what he got from Goodwill. Oh, hello. <laughs> Mom. I just wondered, there we go. If it's going to load you on my screen or not. Yeah, I figured it was. Uh, I'm talking a little bit low because we've got our little nephew in the next room over and I can't be that loud. <laughs> Yeah, so you gotta start screaming. I'm gonna talk real soft, like like the Machumian did before he started yelling real loud. I'm not gonna do that. Hey, so you, you must have you must have gotten something killer to show up on here. Yeah, I've got my old school shirt on, boys. You probably like I wore it out. You can probably see my titties through it. <laughs> uh, so it's like this isn't a stain. This is where the shirt is so damn thin. It looks like a stain, is it, though. Is it like worn <laughs> through the shirt? Yes. Yeah. 
I've got a couple. This is like one of my favorite shirts of all time, though. You can kind of see. Teresa, mijo, tequila, guave. You want something sweet? All right. So, see that? Goodwill, boss. Goodwill. Uncle Bill unboxed his uh, laptop, and this is a secret surprise. And it's going to be brief because I just took a melatonin too. I got to work tomorrow. So I need to get some sleep, but we go in Goodwill every week, like on a Friday usually. And most of the time they don't have a damn thing. This time I was like, what the fuck? I was like, are you kidding me? And then when I heard what they had before, like yesterday, some dude bought and I didn't say anything that I liked horror movies or anything. The cashier is one of those hipster dudes. It's kind of hip on everything. And he was like, yesterday we had Arrow 4K box sets of those Dario Argento, those old Dario Argento movies. So who bought those fucking things? Some dude, dude. some dude. Oh, yeah. And he had like every Godzilla movie as well on Blu-ray. And they were all sealed or a lot of them were That's- sealed, he said. Who the fuck would just drop that stuff off? Because you don't get anything from like good. Well, you just drop well, it off, right? He didn't know if it was somebody local or sometimes they get like shipments in from other areas or whatever. And I was like, that has to be it. There's nobody around here that buys that shit. No. So the stuff I want to show you guys, most of this stuff's a dollar. All right. If it's more, I'll let you know. For a dollar, if it's a 4K, I'm fucking, it's mine. I'm buying it. I don't care if I've already got it. If it's something I don't even ever want to watch, if it's 4K and it's a dollar, I'm getting it. And that's what happened tonight. All right. So you want to go here? <laughs> I'm ready. See what we got here, boss. All right. I don't know anything about this, but this is the only criterion that they had from uh, Wes Anderson. I like his first name. Nice. It's so white, you probably can't see it. The Royal Tenenbaums on Blu ray. Criterion. Let's go through the make sure the discs are in there too. Yeah, the disc is in there with the uh booklet. Right. I hope you're gonna sell that because in movies you know ain't worth shit. One dollar. <laughs> that was a criterion. I think I have Royal Ten and Bombs, the DVD that I found at Goodwill years ago, and I never did watch it either. I mean, to a lot of people they are, but like I just never could stand that guy's movies. Wes Anderson brings us the heartwarming Royal Tenenbaums. Bombs. All right. Now, this was very interesting because this just came out last year. And it's interesting for a couple of reasons. Hang on. Let me get the. Uh... All right. So I saw this one first. This one's sealed. This is supposed to be like one of the best movies of all time. Orson Welles. Uh, the Touch of t- Evil. Touch of Evil. Yeah. Still sealed from Kino Lorber, right? Blu-ray. So I was like, oh God, shit, yeah. Cause like I think they offered like or they sent like a press release about this back when it came out. And I didn't I asked for it, I didn't get it. But then after I saw that, I saw this one. All right. What's the difference? That one's a goddamn 4K. <laughs> what? Dollar. This guy really loved Touch of Evil. A dollar. Evidently, yeah. I don't know why you would. It's a Kino 4K. Just came out last year. All right. And this is a movie that I've never seen, but I've always wanted to see. I've heard people say, like, probably one of the best movies ever made. Have you ever seen Touch of Evil? No. That sounds like a no. good uh, Judas Priest song. It sounds like it would be, yeah couple of these are like what the fuck i'll show these together i love this movie and i'm not afraid to admit it and i'm sure this looks killer in 4k especially for a dollar the dark knight oh yeah i've never yeah. seen that in 4k but i gotta imagine it looks amazing dollar for that and then dark knight rises which i'm not a big fan of that movie but it's in 4k and it's probably looks killer Two you discs. don't like Bane? No. <laughs> yeah, Batman. Yeah. Batman. <laughs> we'll talk like Skeletor. Now you may go ahead and die now, Batman. Yeah. Dollar a piece. 
All right. Also, I need to say, um, I took a picture of these, so I wouldn't, I don't know a damn thing about Doctor Who, but I got these for my brother-in-law. Uh, let's go through and see what they were here. These were box sets. There was, um, uh, they were all three sealed. It was, um, uh, Sylvester McCoy complete season three. It was, that was four ninety nine on Blu-ray still sealed. It's like a $60 box set. <laughs> Colin Baker season two sealed four year, $50 box set. John Purdy or Pertwee season four. <laughs> oh, <Purdy. laughs> All these were sealed, dude. Sealed yeah. 50, $60 Blu-ray sets. I'm hoping you're going to sell that shit. To well, like I, Doctor Who. I gave it to my brother-in-law. Oh, okay. He ain't going to pay us a damn thing for it. So I was out probably 15 bucks there. <clears throat> he ain't going to pay you nothing for it. Let me he won't. He won't. No, he won't. Giving you a dollar. Now, Sarah got this one. I don't, we'll probably never watch it. It's onward in 4K for a dollar. Disney movie or something Disney, like that. yeah. I think I've seen that. It's kind of like the, some of these look really dirty, but. I think they're worth a dollar, right? I may make a separate video about this later on. So, but I only have, man, it's maybe once every two or three years. I, I have a deal like this in Prestonsburg. Um, v for Vendetta 4k. V never, for vagina. I've never seen this movie. <laughs> have you ever seen it? I'm sure there's a porno called that. Uh, there probably is. Yes, a long time ago when it first came out, I saw it. But it got to be like where it was like a hipster classic, and then I just never wanted to see it again because like, right. it was so just shoved down your fucking throat. A lot of these come with the uh, um, digital copies too, so you'll probably see those pop up on the uh, Voodoo page. I think I already have this one though in on Voodoo. Now these were really cool. These were four ninety nine and six. I saw these in your six ninety nine picture. This is killer. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to buy all of them now because well, I've got seasons eleven through twenty of one of my favorite shows of all time, South Park. That one was what was it say four ninety nine? And how many fucking discs is in this? Probably 10 discs or something like that. 10 Blu-rays. Jesus. They had these in the um, behind the counter. I figured they was going to jack the price up more on them, but that one is $6.99, I think. One of them was higher than the other one. Now, yeah. that one that one's $4.99. The other one was $6.99. But, yeah. Uh, who doesn't love South? If you don't like South Park, you're un-American. Bye, we, used to, we used to watch that shit all the time. <laughs> this was the first one I'd seen, and I don't really know a whole lot about these movies aside from uh, the Kubrick movie, which I've seen before. This case has seen better days. It's Columbia C Classics 4K HD Collection Volume 1. This was $2.99. 4Ks of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, uh, Dr. Strangelove, and Lawrence of Arabia. And they're in these artsy fartsy cases here and include the my favorite the goddamn bonus disc it's <laughs> killer so you got these fancy slip covers here right you take that off and you got their regular cover oh. let me say that again real quick it's just too white for me to see it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That's a, you just talk about an amazing movie. That is an amazing movie. It's one that would pop in 4K, possibly. Possibly, yeah. I, I've never seen this one, but it's got James Stewart in it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Mr. Smith goes to Washington now. Yeah. You're not doing anything to help us out. Go fuck Washington. yourself, man, at the movie house. <laughs> I'm in Washington. My God. And uh, Larry of Arabia. Yeah. 
I don't think I own this on anything. So uh, this probably does look amazing. That's a goddamn classic. I mean, two dollars and ninety nine cents. Whoever this person was that all these movies came from, he had like he must have had really great taste in in older kind of classic movies. Dude, I wish to God I could have got that Argento shit. Holy shit! Like I probably got amazing. it all, but we could have used it as like giveaway material or something material for that uh, that sale we're having on. <laughs> All right, so this one's really cool because I don't own any of these movies. Now, they probably suck, but for five ninety nine, it's t- 14 discs, uh, including the 4Ks and the Blu-rays. It is DC 7 Film Collection, and it comes with digital copies, too. So it's a big, thick set. Oh, yeah. Aquaman, Shazam, Wonder Woman, Suicide Squad, Justice League, Man of Steel. And Batman How much was that? Superman, $5.99. <laughs> you got me fucking kidding me. No, and it, it's like, this is probably like 150 bucks or something when it come out. It's got the Blu-rays yeah, in a separate I mean... case and the 4 case. And it comes with a digital copy, too. It has all seven movies which i'm sure it hasn't been used yeah i'm telling you man like as far as movies go i haven't had anything close to this in probably two years (laughs) (coughs) but no there's more this is sealed this was 2.99 i'm probably not going to open this because i haven't seen any of these movies since the first one but i'll probably sell it if anybody's interested let me know $2.99 $2.99 for the 4K of Avengers Endgame sealed. That's crazy. And uh, Sarah got this one, so I don't know if I'll be able to sell it. But um, I think this is the original one. It's a cartoon, so all the new ones are fucking live action because they're lazier than hell. Uh, Milan for two dollars and ninety nine cents, still sealed. I might be able to talk her into selling that. I don't know. Probably good. I'm into superheroes now. Hey, if it's cheap, man, you know. Yeah, trust me. He don't give fuck. Like if it's, I mean, for that amount, you got to buy it. All right, here's some some good stuff though. I remember really liking this movie back in the day, but I probably haven't seen it in twenty years. Um, wasn't this guy married to Madonna? Guy Ritchie, yeah. Smash! I actually love that movie. In four cables. And it probably comes with a digital copy still, right? I would say. Ooh, and it's actually that's it actually probably going to look really good. It does. Dollar. It's a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dollar. Here's another one that was a dollar. And I was hoping to God it was the 4K, but literally the 4K just came out like two weeks ago. So I need to clean this up a little bit. But uh, it's Arrow Video Blu-ray at the fucking Goodwill for a dollar. That's crazy. Mall rats. Yeah. It's kind of dirty. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah. A little damp rag will clean that shit up. This guy was a nasty ass. I'm picturing uh, Brendan Fraser in the whale. He was the movie collector. So that movie, though, that's not that old, is it? Like that version is. It didn't come out that long ago, I don't think. No. Uh, 2020. Yeah. And then, like, Touch of Evil 4K was last year. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one I know will look killer in 4K. I love this fucking movie too, but it does it. Then it's it's yeah, it's two. Hour, it's about a three hour movie. Scarface. Scarface, yeah. For a dollar, four K. Matt says everything Goodwill is always filthy with no explanation as to why. Yeah, it almost looks like some of this stuff was in a damn flood or something. I couldn't get over this one, man. Because I don't have any of these movies in HD. I think I've got one of them on DVD. And this is literally six discs. Let's see, one, two. Let's 
Yeah, six discs. Blu-rays and 4Ks. This was a dollar, man. A dollar. It's uh, Sean of Dead Hot Fuzz. Uh, yeah. and the that world's is fucking end. crazy, man. Dollar 4K. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. So those movies I do love too. Like all those movies. Thick death, baby, for one dollar. Holla. And the last one's another Kano title. It's in 4K. And I love this movie too, and I haven't seen it in a long time. And it probably does look really good in 4K. What year did this uh 2021 this one came out? Space balls in 4K. Holy Lord. Mm. Look at there. Look at that. They're in 4K. Mm. They're what, in 4K. What's funny is too is like when me and Sarah go into the Goodwill, I literally like I have us all crowd over everything so nobody else can look at nothing. And there was like <laughs> <laughs> there was like two or three people standing there watching me, and I just continued to grab like everything. Everything I told Sarah I said every 4k i don't care don't ask me about it just grab every damn one of them and if it's something i don't want you know i'll uh th this is the most 4ks i've ever seen at a goodwill matt i've i've bought one or two here and there but as far as just a gigantic you know so i might i might get uh, are we guessing that they don't even know what 4ks are or they just price them like Anything else? Buddy, I don't know. All I know is, is I got a hell of a deal. I think all this shit, and that's including those four box sets of uh, Doctor Who, $55 and something for everything. That's crazy, yeah. That is an insane amount of shit, especially in 4K to get. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was happy with my purchase tonight. Oh, yeah, I got something else, too. I was wanting to show it. That's off. the thing. People are talking about Goodwill. But the thing about Goodwill is 99% of the time they don't have anything. But there's that 1% where they'll get in shit like that. Yeah. You will hit the mother load. Yeah. Lately, I've just been going and buying, like, VHS tapes and stuff every once in a while. Other than that, you know, I haven't gotten anything in a long time. But I still check every week. Check this out. <laughs> you know what i want to say, really say it for like jaws anything like that for like jaws or anything that'd be a killer like my old nep nephew loves this fucking thing though he walks around like it's a little weed eater yeah oh my god i could tell how many times manny that somebody has taken a shit in the goodwill just for like no reason there's a buddy of mine been, that uh, well, we've heard those stories from Tim though that uh, yeah he said that people would just like shit in the changing rooms like they would shit in shoes shit in like Goodwill clothes. <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> man, they got a bathroom in them damn Goodwills. They just are they not comfortable in the bathroom? They'd rather shit in the floor. Yeah. So they're free shitters. They like shit wherever they're at. Don't like to be constrained to just using a bathroom. Yeah. So that is a hell of a haul, though. Yeah, I actually got my vinegar syndrome stuff in today too, but I haven't opened it yet. So I only got a couple things though. It ain't no big deal. It just took for hell and ever for them to get to me because I ordered it about a month and a half ago. I did too, unfortunately. People are saying they're getting their savoring shit in here recently. Did you see that? A couple people had said. I didn't Garrett get a shipping notice or something? Or somebody told I, it, me they did. I don't know. If yeah, it was, it was something. I don't think it was Garrett, but it was somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Which is bizarre to me because I thought that shit wasn't even getting here till like September or something. Dude who loves movies, if you if you think like that, you don't want to ever get anything because like. If you go to McDonald's or something, maybe the guy that's on the grill also just wiped his ass with his bare hands. I mean, you don't know. You know. He's got shit on his hand and he's flipping your burger. You just can't think about shit like that, right? That's true. He's saying, though, that somebody could have just jammed every movie up their ass. 
Well, nobody took Milan to the toilet and uh, looked at it because it was sealed. I mean, they could have, I guess, but they they couldn't open it, at least. (laughs) Wendy's is the same thing. (laughs) Somebody could be jacking off in the bathroom and going and frying you bacon for the Baconator. Yeah, I never like to think about those places, though, man, because you know that at some point in time, somebody's done some shit like that, and you've eaten, like, their food. Yeah. They're probably, like, wiped their ass with one of the buns or something. (laughs) Just to be an asshole. What the? uh, When are you getting your Timu shit in? Because I noticed that Steve fucking, I don't know if he, like, has been listening in our conversations. That motherfucker's doing a Timu horror video. Wow. Piece of shit, Steve. Motherfucker. I don't know. I don't see what I'm getting my Timu stuff in. Well, we're going to be having a, our own Timu video here shortly, and just don't think we're ripping off Steve because we thought of it first. Damn it. That's right. A baconator is worth the risk. I don't Man. know if it is. I don't know if it is. Honestly, like we were kind of busy this evening and everything, and we got McDonald's for supper, and it was fuck. It was no good. I hate McDonald's, man. I'd rather fucking eat just about anything. Well, we just wanted something quick, right? And I can't eat French fries anymore. But I was like, I think I can hold down some chicken nuggets. So I got chicken nuggets and a damn Big Mac, and neither one was that good. The Big Mac was awful. No, they burnt a fucking. Uh, I've never seen where they burnt the damn patties before. They I didn't burnt... think they could do that. No, I <laughs> thought they'd no, make no. that shit or whatever. It was impossible. But um, no, I good, just thought that the Big Macs were coated with Teflon or something where it can't burn. Some kind of. I don't know. Yeah, and they, it can't ever rot either. Like I've seen people with uh, cheeseburgers from like 1994 finding them in walls and they still look like cheeseburgers. I'd love to have some White Castle right now, though. Saturn brought that up. Now, White Castle's good quality food. Hey, let me tell you something else, too. We tried, um, I think it was Whataburger when we were in Alabama last year. I think it was Mm -hmm. Alabama or maybe somewhere in North Florida. I can't remember. God damn, boys. You talk about a good fucking burger. Holy shit. Very good. We don't have Jack in the Box, no. I've never tried Jack in the Box, I don't think. What about Five Guys? Have you tried Five Guys? I did. I like their fries a lot better than their. I mean, they're it's good. I don't, I'm not going to say it's bad, but uh, their fries are better than their burger to me. Um, there's a in Virginia they have this chain of uh, restaurants called Pals, which I think is killer. Pals like P L S. It's like a smaller restaurant. It's painted baby blue and they've got pals. It looks like they hand wrote pals on it in red, but their burgers are really good. I think it's a chain of some sort. I don't know how big it is, but um, there's, you know how there's always a line around fucking Chick-fil-A. It's like that with pals too. Hmm. Yeah. Crown burgers. I've never even heard of that. Ryan knows about pals. Pals. Let's go to pals. I'm going to get me a pal burger. There was Nicholas Day. Crystals. Do you remember Crystals? Crystals Which still like, exists. Yeah. It's with a K, though. It's Crystal. Yep. Yeah, get it right. We had a Crystal burger in uh, Pikeville briefly there. You remember that? It was in that sh- same shopping center where Walmart is. But it was only in there for like probably six months or something. I, mu- I must not have gone to pot well that time. I don't remember Crystal being in there. It, it when whenever they well, first opened, they up can't that, keep anything in that spot though, man. Like around that, because they yeah. had to like steak and shake closed down too recently. It was the same area, I think, where that remember that blockbuster video was for about yeah. a year. Dude, I don't even want to talk about Lunch on Silvers, man. Holy shit, nasty. No. To be honest with you, like if I eat out anywhere, I'd rather go like somewhere local here, like a Dairy Cheer or yeah. Peking or something like that. I'm about sick of fucking even Taco Bell. I mean, I never thought I'd say that, but Taco Bell, 
they change their menus too often. Like you don't ever know what to expect with Taco Bell. They don't stick to anything. So fuck them. And Wendy's fuck Taco Bell. Let me tell you something. Wendy's as a restaurant has went fucking downhill, 90, 90 degrees downhill, 180 degrees, 360 think- degrees. I like their fries, man. I'll be honest I, with you. Like they're fr- to me, whenever you started seeing the skin of the potato, those fries can go shit and fall back in it. They ruined their fries. <laughs> well, the thing they started doing that I think was a good idea was they made it to where like they basically have to be you like right out of the fryer because if not, you can take them back with that new like way that they're doing. Can that you now. take them back if you think it tastes like shit? <laughs> That'd be killing. I don't. You, they're cooked well, but I just think these are fucking shitty. They started doing the, the sea salt fries or something when they yeah. changed them. And you know that it, they did away with their grilled chicken sandwich. Now you can only yep. get the grilled chicken wrap, which is good. I like the grilled chicken wrap. It's fine. But goddamn, let's put the same chicken on a fucking bun. Don't be ridiculous. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you like one of my. One of my favorite fast food things were, and they completely discontinued it years ago. There was a period in time where McDonald's had something called premium chicken wraps. And they were like huge ass wraps with like, you could either get like barbecue or ranch and like something else. And they were great. And they only had them for about maybe a year. And then they just never, they just discontinued them. Didn't they have chopped up carrots in their wraps? I think they had shredded carrots, maybe, and like something. I always else. thought that was so weird. Like, I hate raw carrots anyway. So I, I, if I forgot to tell them to leave the carrots off, I was so pissed off when I had them crunchy ass <laughs> carrots. Yeah. But here's the weird thing: if it's cooked carrots, I love cooked carrots. I could eat cooked carrots by by themselves. But raw carrots. <sighs> Carrots are gross as fuck. Yeah, Wendy's Wendy's ain't been a fuck since they got rid of the, uh, what was that called, the hot bar? <laughs> oh, the super the bar. bar? The super bar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, man, the super bar, like a lot of you guys in the chat, probably too young to remember it, because it went out probably in the early 90s, maybe 1990, 1991. They lost their ass on that, but it was great. Yeah, because they wasted so much food, I guess. I don't know, but... Literally a vat of fucking pudding. You could get like, <laughs> it was like 35 pounds fucking, of pudding. You could dive into that pudding. Get your ass in that pudding. You know, fucking uh, nine-year-old creepy Kentuckian going in there. Goddamn, I'm going to get a whole damn plate of pudding. It was the most bizarre assortment of food to have in like a Wendy's. Like they had, you could get spaghetti, tacos. Uh, They had a whole taco bar, like a whole salad bar. A hamburger bar where you could like get your like make your own hamburgers had and shit. chili and shit too didn't chili they? baked chili potatoes like yeah remember those little garlic breads they had i love them things. yeah it was crazy though man you had like every kind of food you could think of in a wind make like, up they had a big vat of bait of uh, refried beans and taco meat and everything you can make you a big burrito or nachos yeah. or yeah, because didn't they have them like separated by country? Like it had Mexico, it had Italy. Yeah, it, had it the was US. Like, it was like their own little themes. You know, it's just crazy to think about that in a fast food joint. Like they tried to make it fancy. That something. was, I mean, I remember like that. We went in. I guess they were wanting people to go in and eat. That's why. Yeah, they did that. But uh, those were the glory days, man. All that pudding. I remember that. That's the number one thing. Get you some pudding. Mm, yeah. Butterscotch. They had butterscotch pudding and chocolate pudding. Mm, pudding. Pizza. Let me tell you something about pizza. That used to be like, people don't realize this. Back in the 80s, pizza used to be fucking fancy. Like that used to be someplace you would go on like a family night. Like everybody would like sit down and like, you know, somebody would wear a suit and a dress and shit. But they that was also the place back in the 80s. And one of the only places that you had like birthday parties. If you didn't have them at home, you generally had them at Pizza Hut. If you want to get real fucking fancy, you had them at like is... Billy Bob's Wonderland. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Giovanni's is where Pizza Hut used to be. Yeah. And I can still walk in there and it still feels like fucking Pizza Hut in there. They've remodeled it a little bit. It looks somewhat different, but 
I can, it's every time I walk in there, I can remember where everything was at that paid set when I was a kid. They still have that separate room where all the birthday parties were out front, like it was a yeah. sun room or something. And they had video games in the front there. They had like, a, I remember Mortal Kombat machine was in there. They had a jukebox, like right when you walked into the left where you played like a bunch of Jukebox. Most people just like country songs and shit all day. And I remember like whenever you put your quarter in to pick your song, you literally waited until you were almost gone by the time it played. Like that's how much money those things made back then. But when they brought the food out though, man, that was what's so fancy about it because I'm yeah. sure like looking at it now, you were like, oh, it's some stupid teenager bringing your, your pizza out. But it was like you were at a damn fancy restaurant and they yeah. had this big thing out and spooned the pizza out flipped it out on your plate for and you the best fucking thing is when they first when they finally came out with the personal pan pizzas and they bring it out in that little pan you had your own fucking pizza like it's tiny little pan and shit yeah do they even do personal pan pizzas anymore i don't think so pizza mm. sucks ass now man like i'm fucking like disappointed in pizza Hut. like when you I, go get a i don't think they're that bad actually like the one in Prestonsburg's not too bad it used to be like the actual pizza is what I'm talking about. The last couple times, granted, it's been a, a while since I got a pizza there, but the last couple times I've gotten pizza there, they were always like soggy as shit. It used to be pizza pizzas were like the crisp. bottoms were crisp. Yeah. And now would, it's just like I'll, fucking weighed down with grease. I would try it again. I think they've got new management or something because the last few times that I've gotten it, it's like old school Pizza Hut. That would be amazing, man, if it was like that. I saw it. I can't eat Domino's pizza. I've tried that stuff. It's fucking awful. Some people, Domino's is like a preferred taste or something. Like some people just live and die by Domino's. But yeah, most people hate it. Like I don't think it's that bad, but Sarah can't, I can never get it because Sarah hates it so much. There's still, uh, when we went up to Michigan, there's still <laughs> Godfather's pizzas up there. I'll tell you one that's you probably, those? oh yeah. I tell you one that's probably the most divisive pizza place too, and they're not really around here any much anymore, but they used to be Papa John's. Like people either love that fucking place or absolutely hate it. I was kind of in the middle. Like I, I used to love it at one time, but I think that one here was just not very good. Like it, they couldn't keep people, and it just I, I don't know. Their uh, barbecue chicken pizza was pretty damn good though. It was back in the day. First time I ever had barbecue chicken pizza was Papa John's. <clears throat> we should do our own food podcast. I <laughs> that we could just go out and eat. That's one thing I could talk about for hours and hours and hours is food. Let me tell you something that I've been eating a lot because, you know, I've been on that, that pill. Well, I've been off it for the last couple of weeks because you can't get it hardly. Or that shot, I mean. Um, so I'm trying to not eat as much greasy shit. I've been hooked on grilled salmon or baked salmon, either oh, one, yeah. and, and uh, broccoli and all that. Like, you can. I tell you what we do is uh, a lot of times because the kids really like salmon. I don't know how that got in. They got into that, but Walmart has like, um, it's like a four or five pound thing of salmon for like twenty bucks. Mm. It's it's this fucking long, like it's huge. And you can get, it's like fresh salmon and you just, I take it in there and I put butter on it, lemon, add a little bit of lemon pepper seasoning to it, bake it for about 20 minutes. It's amazing. Some good shit. That's like the best shit ever. Let me tell you a secret though, man. Listen to this. And I, I found this recipe online. Like you can season it however you want to season it. Maple syrup, squirt maple syrup on the top of it. You will shit your pants. It's so fucking good. Like we I don't squirt maple syrup all the time. <laughs> we don't, uh, <laughs> we haven't had maple syrup in a long time. So I switched it up with some Asian zing sauce and that's really good too. It's hot and everything. Oh yeah. Um, that but, Korean barbecue and Asian zing stuff is amazing. You get some yeah. of that. Polynesian sauce too. The Chick-fil-A sauce. You can get it in like Walmart now. Yeah. Look, I'm addicted to that shit. I could guzzle that. Um, something else we get too. like i know you and i were crab leg enthusiasts back in the day before we were cardboard enthusiasts we'd like to go and uh the happy dragon and just devour the hell out of all them poor little crab legs 
God, that was insane. That right shit, now. that shit is so expensive now. Like, I don't know if you've looked like in stores, like you know, king crab legs, snow crab, any of that shit. You can get like a little package of it, and it's like seventy dollars or something. So, Jesus. I haven't gotten crab legs like that in forever. Like they're not on the buffets anymore. Like they used. Now to they're be. not. Come think of it, yeah. But they have at Food City, it is imitation crab legs. And I didn't know it was even imitation. How do you have an imitation crab leg? Dude, let me tell you something. If you, I know you go shopping at Food City sometimes. Yeah. Go back there and get that shit. If you grill in a steak, put a little packet of it and uh, grill it with some butter in it. It's not exactly crab legs, but it's pretty goddamn close. And it, a whole package of that shit's just thirteen dollars. They and should call like, that should be the name of it. Not exactly crab legs. <laughs> what it is is it's that kill. same. I think it's similar to like you know the imitation crab meat that you can get in like packets or whatever. Yeah, but they have it like I, I don't know. They have they have it shaped like actual crab legs. So it does look like crab meat and everything. Um, oh, I've got some in there right now. Yeah, I mean, I the only reason I get it is because um, Savannah's allergic to real crab. So like the imitation shit that she's not. Oh yeah, allergic you're talking to, about like, the cold. Yeah. 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 We dip it in some cocktail sauce. So. But somebody said something on here. I was going to bring it up. Hold on. Oh, yeah, they mentioned CeCe's Pizza. Do you remember there used to be one right beside Best Buy in Huntington? There was a fucking CeCe's Pizza right there. I remember CeCe's. And, yeah, we used I, to go into that before when we were up there in Huntington. I remember Donato's, too. You remember Donato's? I think they're still yeah, around. I, do. I don't know. I think Donato's is still around. I, even back then, I knew CeCe's Pizza was shit, though. It was super cheap, but their pizza was just fucking bullshit. What about the best pizza you can get in Barberville, boys? Gino's. <laughs> Gino's it's been there for 50 years. Yeah, it has. And it's never been that great. I don't know how they've, they've survived. Fucking Gino's pizza. Gino's pizza tastes like somebody just bought a fucking Red Baron pizza and fucking fixed it. <laughs> did I tell you about that pizza we had when we were in Memphis? Oh, no. Yeah, you did. The one that oh. had like big old sauce and shit on it i don't know I would, if any, that'd have been so killer to see like we've got we've got a lot of people in the that. chat so you might know what style of pizza this is i don't i've never heard of anybody doing pizza like this <clears throat> these pizzas were 50 dollars a piece like 47.99 a piece plus taxes we got we had a whole house full of people we went with my wife's family and everything so we got two of them. It was like almost a hundred dollars for two pizzas. And I was like, what the, how the fucking killed some right there. I'd have killed somebody. So I picked these hundred dollars for two pizzas. I didn't even know how much they were. Sarah just paid for them. I was in there waiting on them to, you know, get done. It seemed like it took forever. We was almost in the middle of a fucking shootout in Memphis, fucking ghetto. Somebody's Hell. talking about Memphis the other day. Was so oh my God. About how crazy it is. Memphis, yeah, is a fucking dump, man. It really is. Like, there's some nice stuff in it, but not much. Um, But anyway, I picked these two pizzas up, and I swear to God, it was 50 pounds for these two pizzas. <laughs> this shit was so fucking heavy. And I was like, God damn, boys, is this some... I'm finally going to get... Maybe this is like Chicago-style pizza, because I've never really had real Chicago pizza before. Yeah. I was thinking, oh, shit, yeah, this is going to be some of that th thick, deep-dish stuff. But I open it up and it just looks like a regular pizza. But when we bit into it, the entire, I'm not kidding you, the entire pizza had like a layer of sausage under the cheese and everything else like that. So it was like a giant sausage patty. And it was like the richest sausage ever too. Like it's very, and I was like, holy shit. I, there's no way I can eat much of this. I'll be sicker than a fucking dog. <laughs> And uh, that was like probably one of the worst pizzas I've ever had in my life. I yeah, I don't know, man. For a hundred dollars, it, it, it I about would have slung it at somebody's fucking head. Yeah. Somebody yeah. on here brought this up, man, and this is like this gave me like a flashback in nostalgia. People don't remember this, but nowadays my kids are nobody like younger remembers this. But 
back in the day, Little Caesars Pizza used to be number one, really, really good. But number two, it was two pizzas. Mm-hmm. When you bought a Little Caesars Pizza, it came in squares, but there was like two sides. They were separated. It was by a like big, a long like, yeah. thing. Yeah. That's why it's they, they do the pizza pizza thing. I don't know if they still do it anymore, but like that's what they used to be their gimmick. So you had two pizzas and like smaller pizzas usually, but you could get the bigger ones too, like on each side. And that was their cutting, gimmick. They were, they were square pizzas cut in squares yep. too. And so then nowadays, all, they're like, only known for that fucking hot and ready pizza, which is like, that's that's a rough one to try to eat, man. Like, I don't know if you... It depends try on to eat one of those. If you go to Pikeville and get it through the drive through there, it's not too bad. But they used to have... Now, here's the thing. If it doesn't come right out of the oven, you're fucked. Because it'll taste like you're chewing on the side of a fucking box. Well, you should probably get, like, order one, like, with onions on it or something. To make it different. <laughs> Mix it up, yeah. But, um... They used to put crazy bread in there with those two pizzas too. I don't know what they call oh, yeah. that. I think their crazy fan- bread was better than their actual pizzas even back in the day. Though. That shit was amazing. Their Italian cheese bread's pretty good. Little Caesars though, man, that uh, that five dollar pizza that saved their whole cut. They'd be out of business if they didn't have that. That's true. We got a hundred and twenty fucking people in here. Yeah, listen to us talk about fucking Wendy's and Little Caesars. And shit. So it's time we talk about our wonderful documentary, Into the Pit, yeah. which is available on uh, orbitdvd.com, grindhousevideo.com, deadpitonpatreon.com is the cheapest place you can get it, but you got to become a member. Ain't that right, Uncle Bill? That's true. You got to buy it and you got to buy it now. You got to get a member of, on our Patreon. Why, why aren't you a member, by the way, if you're not? Yeah, you got 120 because... people in here. There's 120 people in here, and I know that most of you probably are not members. So if you are not, then you're missing out on every piece of content that's ever been created by Dead Pit, basically, for a very low price. We, we've got all kinds of different tiers yeah. that you can select. You can help uh, support the greatest comeback since Bob Backlund was the, the Dead Pit revival. It's true. And, uh, you know, all the bullshit that we come out with on a – a multi-day basis each week. We're coming harder than Peter North, boys. Where's he at? Is he in here tonight? He's not in here tonight, though. He usually likes to. You remember McPizza? <laughs> Let, I remember, here's what I remember. One time we went on a field trip for school, mm. and it was around the time the McPizza came out, and that's what I got. Yeah. We went to McDonald's for some reason, and I got the McPizza, and I thought that was the greatest fucking thing ever but I was probably about eight years old. So I didn't know any better. I don't, that I, I think I tried it at one time, but I really don't remember it at all. The big it thing didn't last I, very long. Yeah. That I would love to see McDonald's come back with, believe it or not. I loved this when it debuted and I got it like almost for a year straight was the arch deluxe for McDonald's. It was like one oh, of the big, yeah. the biggest flops ever. Like It they, was, but it was actually pretty good, man. Yeah, it wasn't a bad sandwich. They I think it was all it fresh back. too. Bring it back wasn't, for a limited time. Wasn't that like part of the gimmick? Like I remember it being like it was a bigger patty, but it was also like all the stuff in it, like it was lettuce and onion and tomato, was all pretty fresh, like as opposed to what they normally. Yeah, and it had some sort of special burger sauce. Yeah, in it, some good shit. Do we approve of Into the Pit being free on YouTube? It's not on there. Don't look for it or anything. I swear it ain't on there. Yeah, it's not on there at all. Here's the thing. And and you listen to Don May Jr. and he'll tell you that's the truth. Streaming movies looks like fucking shit. You should never do it. It looks awful. It's unwatchable. Movies on YouTube is basically like you're not even watching a movie. The bit rate on that's pathetic. Right, Uncle Bill? I don't like the bit rate on YouTube shit. I mean, if you pull up the the bit meter, it you look on there and it's embarrassing how low it is. The bit meter. The bit meter <laughs> on the yeah. Every good TV should have a bit meter, and when you go on YouTube on your TV, cue that bit bit meter up and just see how awful it is compared to the even the DVD. I'm gonna ask you a serious question though on here right now. Yeah. The McRib. I don't even want to get started about the McRib. That shit, like. Yeah. 
back when it originally came out, I feel like it was better than it is now. When it comes back around now, it tastes like you eat inside of a fucking yoga mat or something. And you probably are. I can't do the McRib anymore, man. I used to love it, but, and be, be honest with you, I probably loved it up until a few years ago, but there was one time that I tried it and I was like, God, this is literally like a fucking banquet dinner meat. That's or what like it, that. that you're exactly right. That's what it tastes like. It tastes like a banquet fucking like rib dinner. Like a Salisbury steak with barbecue yeah. sauce on it or something. Yeah. It's yeah. bad. No good. Fuck the McRib. Don't bring it back. Anyway, I was going to, I was going to ask you. Oh, are we doing the, are we going to take the Dana challenge about uh, watching Terra on tour? I basically like would rather fucking stick something in my urethra than watch that movie again. But. Well, I wish Dana would have just asked me because I could have told her that I ain't even going to be home. <laughs> <laughs> she got on YouTube and challenged both she of us. She can like, challenge me all she wants to, but I ain't going to be, I ain't going to be here. We're taking the baby up to see it's grainy tomorrow and then going swimming and shit. So I'll probably be up there all damn day. So there you go, Dana. Yeah. We're babysitting all weekend, Dana. Or I am at least uncle Bill can go on there if he wants to. I don't know if I can do it. I, don't I think I can have do the it. patience to do it. Even though Dana didn't donate anything to your uh, laptop fund. We don't know she did or not though. Cause there was a couple of anonymous, uh, donors on there. So what if that was one of them? Oh, she wouldn't do Could've nothing been. anonymously. She'd want credit. <laughs> what the fuck? Dana's all about the publicity. Yeah. Oh, God. I didn't have a CK baby. CK had Jack a baby. He, he actually did, yeah. Well, we got one in the next room, but it's not uh, ours. It's our little nephew. He's, he's a side, I'll tell you. He's a little ginger kid. Starting <laughs> to get Dana real... Jack Jack says the Dana challenge is living with Steve for a month. <laughs> I don't think that'd anybody else will accept that challenge. <laughs> been, if she said that, it'd been fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, any new vinyl lately, Uncle Bill? Have you bought anything? I haven't bought any vinyl in a fortnight. You've got to have some vinyl before I am. Mm, nothing like anybody in the chat would be interested in. I ordered, um, they're doing the 10 year anniversary box set of a uh, Southeastern Jason Isbell, uh, like box set. It's got oh, like, yeah. demos in it. It's got a live, uh, concert and remastered and shit like that. I ordered that that's coming out next month. Um, my wife's gotten a bunch of vinyl lately. She buys a bunch of shit. Uh, Laney Wilson, you know who that is? Yeah, she's mm -hmm. the new, like, <laughs> stop making that fucking noise. I like her, Uncle Bill. I yeah. like her a lot. Hey, she's got a record, and I swear to God, this is what got me into her. I was like, holy shit. Like, she is encouraging her fans to sniff her pants. What? <laughs> so, she's got a Walmart exclusive record out. Like, it's called uh, Bell Bottom Country or something like that. Dude, she does. Like, go look her up, Uncle Bill. Lord, that's a oh. voluptuous young woman there. But the gimmick is that it's got, she's got this song called Watermelon Moonshine or something like that. And her pants, it says on the, the hop sticker that the, the cover is watermelon scented, right? The cover is. It's not the cover. It's her fucking pants. <laughs> Come on, uh, sniff on Lady Wilson's drawers. <laughs> it smells like watermelon. Mm. Watermelon sunshine. She does have an incredible ass. Rambo, you're welcome, and I, hopefully we get to do a show here in the near future since I got the new computer. Can yeah, Rambo. Yeah, we're all going to have to do uh, do something together. Rambo is uh, more than welcome to join us. We're doing a community commentary a week from tonight. Yep on uh slumber party massacre which uh the ramones did a song here it come for that how'd it go yeah. uncle boo you, you're the one. Uh, hey, massacre. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit by the way i'm gonna call this right now that we're gonna do we've got to We've got to do 
the next um the next one that we have to do has got to be extra believer though the next on the road I, we've got to honey, do i'm it. fucking down it's it's your ass that needs to show up You well, know, you t- may show up. I don't. I've never been like I'm gonna be there and then just fucking not showed up. Here's what people don't realize. Now, this is the thing. This is we did go on the road. I mean, be it in different vehicles, but we saw Scream Six together. That's true, right? We I saw Scream Five in the theater. That's where I got fucking COVID for the first time. That's why I'll never fucking like that movie at all. Coco Ant says that she hates the Ramones too, Uncle Bill. Even though they're all dead, she still hates them. Oh, there's there's one, one of them. One yeah, of them. the drummer's still alive, but that doesn't really count. Cause yeah, he's... nobody cares about him. <laughs> nobody really does, to be honest. Jimmy Ramone was his name or something, wasn't it? It was Gerald. Gerald Ramone. <laughs> Jerry. Jerry. Jerry Ramone. Razor Ramone. <laughs> Larry Ramone. It was Razor Ramone. That'd be killer. <laughs> Hey, yo, uh, let's go. I've never, you're right, Ram. It was me. I've never been big on Slumber Party Massacre. Like, I just didn't. I thought the second one was actually more entertaining than the first one. It's really short, though, isn't it? Like, uh, Slumber yeah, it's Party Massacre is not long. So, but yeah, I knew people would get a kick out of my Goodwill haul. Yeah, there's there's still 122 fucking people in here. Hell yeah. I don't know why, but there is. I don't know either. I took some melatonin, and I'm starting to feel it, but I might be good for about another five or ten minutes. Who knows? I was telling them about this, though. Have you seen this movie? The Rest to Kill. Mm, Brian De Palma. I think I've got it. I don't really remember it offhand. I don't know if I've seen it or not. You need to fucking watch this movie again. It, I mean, it's just like an American version of like an Argento movie. It's almost, I mean, if you could visualize that in your head, that's what this is. Hmm. It's Kino, Kino did that. Kino put that out. Yeah. I got it at the last sale they had for like 17 bucks. You were talking about boutique labels though. Yeah. You know, second sight's hard to beat, but yep. for the value for uh, just the amount of movies that they come out with, Kino is pretty damn hard to beat too. Kino is like I don't know how to explain them. There, there's nothing fancy about them. Like they don't ever do anything like you know any kind of big packaging or boxes. But they release more shit than just about anybody in terms of yeah, just releases that have never even been on Blu-ray. And like I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get that double troll fucking. Blu-ray with the oh, Barbarian yeah. Brother. I asked for that to review it. I don't know if I'll get it or not, but I, hope I don't know if I've ever late. seen it. But um, you said Severin was the worst, man. I think Scream Factory is the worst. Like, I hate Severin. There, yeah. yeah but I, Scream Factory is embarrassingly bad at this point. Like, just how much they charge for shit. And it's just junk, too. Like, those fucking enamel pins. We got 118 people watching this live right now. Do any of you fucking guys collect those stupid pins? Anybody? I think I thought that maybe um, after a what's his face Jeff Nelson left or whatever that it would gotten better, but I think it's actually gotten worse here recently. Like <laughs> the shit they've been doing. Well, what I say too is like. So, their transfers and stuff are pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Like, uh, you know, the product isn't too bad, but it's just like the, the price on this stuff is just ridiculous. It's insane. And even like, what was it? School spirit and laser Tron or whatever the hell. Some of them yeah. movies, $30 a piece, just because yeah. they're limited to 1500 copies. Creep show three was one of them. And I just I think I'd, I like would that. just I just jump out a fucking window. If I paid like forty some dollars for Creep Show three. Yeah, and you're getting people that were huge supporters buying everything to just say that pop 
uh, Pop's movie dungeon, Alan, he stopped. He was like, fuck it. I'm just going to sell off my collection. I can't, I can't just get this because I've got all the other Scream Factory releases. I'm just going to sell my shit off. And that's what he's starting to do, you know, and you're going to get more people like that because Scream Factory's relying on those people like, like Pop, you know, that just buy every Scream Factory thing. Yeah. Fuck. I I think I can't, if he gives up on you, then you know something's fucking bad wrong. Yeah, thirty dollars a piece for some of those movies—that's just ridiculous. That's awful. Any of the stuff they really—I haven't bought any of their four Ks that they've released in the last like six months, man. Like, and they've released a ton of stuff. Yeah, but it's like it's all just the same bullshit. It's all the same like Blu-rays that they've already released, like just it's ported right on to 4K. Yeah, yeah, all those stuff's predictable. I mean, you can kind of like, and that's why I tell people too, those Sleepaway Camp sequels, sell them fucking things, make your money on them right now because if Scream Factory doesn't re-release them, somebody's going to. And when the 4Ks come out, those things ain't going to be worth nothing. And the yeah. same. You know, man, uh, man hunters the same way. You know, some of those big titles like that. Watch them one last time and sell them and make your money for a while. It may be a little while. Who knows? But that shit's gonna come back out. Ain't no doubt about it. But uh, I don't know why you would buy some of these titles right when they come out either. Like Scream Factory has been having sales. So I, I just wait. I mean, I ain't no big fucking hurry. It ain't like a, I'm going to do fucking cartwheels. I turn to my mailbox and <laughs> excitement to watch some of this shit. No. Oh, <laughs> none of this shit really. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> How long do you think it'll be to those sleepways get released sooner than later? I'll bet. Like all that stuff's going to get re-released, man. Way they're going. Yeah. Very rarely is. I mean, there are exceptions where movies like Cheerleader Camp, it's been almost 20 years since that thing's come out. Dead Alive, everybody thought that would be out again, and it's been on the same shit for like 20 years. I'm with Rambo, though. Like, I like the 4K stuff. If I can get a good deal on the 4K stuff, like I did earlier, dollar a piece on a lot of those. There's too many people out there that are just blindly going and rebuying all this shit they've already got in 4k i don't give a fuck about jaws 2 in 4k i that's just one i mean the case looks cool and everything but i just i'm fine i've got a blu-ray of it i'll watch it ever seven or eight years maybe and that's good enough for me you got buddy you got to buy all the new shit though in 4k that's how it is i can't imagine how much money you would spend if you just bought all of the 4ks that screen factory was releasing like the just the shit that's already been released. Yeah. If you bought every one of those that came out, you would spend like three hundred dollars a month, probably. Probably. Oh yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that just have a disposable income, I guess, that don't give a shit. But let me tell you, um, one that I bought today, I may regret it. It was twenty five dollars. Well, it's like thirty after shipping and everything, is that Canadian horror movie pin has a German oh. Blu-ray that uh, was recently released. I'm kind of taking a chance on it. I don't know what it's going to look like or anything, but that's one horror movie that I have never owned on anything, and it looks very intriguing. So, Did Turbine but, release uh, that, or was that somebody else? It's some other studio um, right. I'm not familiar with, but it's never like Anchor Bay DVD was the last release Penn has ever had, and that's been well over 20 years ago at this point probably 23, 24 years ago. But if the melatonin's kicking in, I'm about ready to fucking go to bed too. Yep. Just, I can't state this enough though. Thanks to everybody that has donated in the past for the GoFundMe for this because it's here and I'm going to set it up probably tomorrow. But isn't it lovely? For the fans, by the fans, Bull, since back in the day. Somebody bought me a computer back in the day too. Yeah. You remember that? I kind of do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. 
I know our buddy uh, Zombie that was in the end of the pit documentary made a really large donation towards that computer in particular. I think he paid yeah. for most of it, actually. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the fans have definitely uh, been awesome over the uh, – yeah, I'm starting <laughs> to see shadow people. Shadow people. Oh, shit. <laughs> but, yeah, big thanks to everybody. And uh, I guess the big news is the next stream will be the birthday stream uh, on Wednesday. You need to take that fucking photo, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I will. Because it's going to be great if you do. It'll be great, I promise. It'll be better than this thumbnail, this show. I don't know. That's pretty hard to fucking beat, really. You look like an angry Chinese <laughs> person or something. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> but you you can take us out because if I hit it, it'll fucking take an hour to like load up. Okay. So um, check us out on the Instagram page tomorrow, starting tomorrow, too, uh, at End of the Dead Pit. I've got, I think I've got all my photos ready to rock and roll starting around noon tomorrow. And Uncle Bill's going to start on Sunday, right? Yeah. So at Into the Dead Pit on Instagram. And as always, deadpit.com. Buy out of the Chromebook. Fuck it. Where's that thing at here? Hmm. Click on it. Hmm. Take Click us on. out. Slap cold fud. Give us the thumbs up. Off you butts. Like subscribe and if you subscribe here's something else you can do once you subscribe you can click the bell notification right and it'll notify you anytime that dead pit puts up new shit or don't i really don't give a if you do i don't. want you to i want you to <laughs> let's, let's keep our community growing here on no, YouTube. i don't i don't like it i don't want you to do nothing Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you yeah. dare touch it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And <laughs> click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpit.com. Simply the best horror shirts on T Public. There are others, but they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears started only $1.